Dolphins have got some trouble already going into week one of the NFL season. We are waiting uh, some results from some folks out there, but obviously things are not good as uh, Austin Jackson and uh, Adam Shaheen, the anti-vaxxer, have been put on the COVID-19 list. We're going to talk to Omar Kelly and the EJD Construction.com Miami Dolphins report. We do that next. For over 16 years, EJDConstruction.com has provided South Florida residents quality craftsmanship, accurate project management, and exceptional service. That's why EJDConstruction.com is an A-rated member of Angie's List and the Better Business Bureau. When you're looking for the right custom home builder for additions or home remodeling, please call my friend Eric at 305-433-4843. That's 305-433-4843 for EJDConstruction.com. The viewpoints, statements, or beliefs expressed on the following program by the host, guests, or callers are not necessarily the opinions of FantasyXS.com, media grouping, ownership, management, sponsors, or website. The Big O Radio Show is home for the hardcore Dolphins fan. That's why we give you Omar Kelly twice a week. Buckle up, it's time for the EJDConstruction.com Miami Dolphins Report exclusively on the Big O Radio Show. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, Oh, How you doing, my brother? You doing all right? Good morning. Uh, this is Labor Day. Daycares are closed, so we have a guest star here. Nice. Participating in the show. There Andrew we go. Zila. There she we we actually, we actually got a real reporter on today instead of you. <laughs> all right, I like it. I like it. I like it. She's going to give us a real scoop now. Yeah. There we go. And, uh, and by the way, uh, we, we'd be remiss, Omar, if we didn't say Friday night we had a really good night out with Eric at EJD Construction. We went over to his house, and uh, and the man cooked up a storm with some steaks and chicken and and uh, some peppers and all kinds of stuff, man, potato, everything. It was a uh, good I, meal. I was, I was getting some grilling lessons, and uh, yes. I, it, it will shall help me take my grilling to the next level. Well, I can uh, I can learn certainly from both of you. I certainly need help uh, in that area. But uh, Eric, my brother, you uh, you knocked it out of the park. Great stuff. That that that's, that meat was just like melting in your mouth, dude. It was just excellent steaks. So we uh, appreciate it immensely. I got no gout attack out of it too, which is good. Which is hey, really, really and great. I got those pills. I'll t I'll let you know. Uh, 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 Eric oh, I ordered them, them too. Some, some gout I get pills. Them today. You do? I get okay. Them yeah, yeah, I ordered it from Amazon. I get them today in the mail. So yeah, yeah it's I, funny they're... that both of us uh, gout runs in our family, hereditary. It is what it is, man. That's what part of getting old. Yeah, yeah. No, tell me about it. I've had it for a while, having to deal with this damn gout. Uh, before I get into uh, the Dolphins, your thoughts on on the U and and what you saw? Because I'm sure you watched some of that mess on Saturday night. Uh, unfortunately, I covered the last uh, respectable Hurricanes team when people were running Larry Coker out of town for back-to-back -to -back Peach Bowl appearances. Um, I say this all the time. They have not reached the level of getting back to the Peach Bowl. Uh, and unfortunately, they don't look – they have they have no resemblance to the Canes team that I once covered. None. Right. Zero. Or, or even before that. Or even before or the last – I, I, I have to think – from '80s to the early 2000s, nothing. I, I didn't Not see. Close. I didn't see those teams, but I have to think that they would struggle with UCF, USF, FAU, FIU at this point uh, yeah, on a, it, on a regular basis. Yeah, all these all, like all these uh, games coming up: App State, Michigan State. Uh, yeah. they're gonna be tough, they're gonna be tough games for them, and that's a joke. Uh, That's let, let, let's let's hope they re uh, starting the season with Alabama would have been a Herculean feat for anybody in in college football. It would have yeah. been a Herculean feat for Clemson. So let's let's put that in perspective. Let's hope that they get out of the the hangovers that they have after losses and put together a respectable season. Uh, as as I've said for years now, uh, Peach Bowl is my goal. Let's get to the Peach Bowl and. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, baby steps and we'll get to respectability. But it was a sad, disappointing, tragic outcome. Yeah, you thought yeah, so too, it, huh? 
It's it, it seems, but it seems like it's the same story every year. My issue with them now is I don't believe they'll ever be a lead again. Uh, not not with the kind of leadership they have now. They can, uh, the, the, they can get what, back there, but the the things that I've seen while they've made tremendous strides in resources and facility, I could tell you that when the Canes were great, their position coaches were great and dynamic, and would coach up players and get them better from when they were freshmen to they were seniors. Uh, that's when the Canes were great. And I don't think that they have that kind of caliber of staff anymore. Um, I, I, I don't think they're putting the resources towards that. And maybe if they did, maybe we'd be a little bit further along as a program. Um, I don't have a strong or good opinion of Manny Diaz. We'll see. Um, but so far, mm, not for me. Um, and, and But the thing is, I don't believe that anybody who replaced him, except for some, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in um, uh, uh, this team needs a former pro coach to come and teach him and coach them up the way that Herm Edwards is doing in Arizona State. Uh, I, that's what I believe. And I and, I don't think any college coach is going to really make that kind of difference. Well, I I, I agree with Manny. I, I agree with Manny. I think you got to hire a coach that's already rebuilt college programs, like an experienced okay. guy. That's I, I think that now that's a really hard combo to find that the dude's like available out there. And hey, I'm successful. Like Urban Liar was available. Now you could have hired Urban Liar, but obviously there's a lot of garbage that comes with Urban Liar. So Jacksonville hired him, but what I'm saying is you've got to find somebody that is like Urban but doesn't lie like Urban. Ur Urban, and Urban, Urban would have wanted Urban. first class resources and facilities. He would have never yeah. came. Yeah, now, and, and by the way, and as for facilities, you've been to the Senior Bowl the last two years, correct? Correct. Or one yes. or two, right? Yeah. Uh, why don't you the, tell them that South Alabama has a pretty nice indoor facility, <laughs> and it's South Alabama. I'm yeah, just saying. No. It, you know, for people to brag about the facilities, just go to South no, freaking you're, you're Alabama. Just, you're just, you're just with the facilities. You're just getting to baseline. What your facilities right. are is what FSU and UF had ten years ago. So, but, but keep in mind, when I covered that team, they didn't even have a training table. No, so, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and facilities when they were winning championships, they didn't right. have any practice or indoor facility or or great weight room. So. Let, let listen. It's not that's not what you need. <laughs> what what you need is great coaches, and you need and, a uh, and great dogs and dogs. Yeah. Dogs. You can tell me all you want about Nestor Silvera. He ain't Warren Sapp, dude. Okay, he's he's not. You know any of those kind of cats that we've had here in the past, Jerome Brown and all that kind of stuff. Vince Wilfork. He might be a good player. But he's not one of those kind of guys. College, college football has changed so drastically, and, and people don't understand that. And it's negatively impacted everybody except for Alabama because it, it's even impacted the Oklahomas and the Nebraskas and, you know, all of these former college powers. Um, but it, it bottom, down, bottom line is it comes down to player development. Well, you well, well, what you just talked about, look, Oklahoma is still a power. And why? Because of a dynamic coach. Yeah, but they, they took a dip as well. They took a dip as well. Uh, it, it, everybody, everybody has had to adjust and, and alter because of the new college football landscape. Listen, a kid can go to Buffalo and still get into the first round in the NFL right now. So <laughs> – it, it doesn't matter where you play or where you start. Yes, it doesn't matter where you play or where you go. Or you don't sit for years and, and wait for the development of a pro, of, of players. You got to go in there and you got to do it right now. You got to get them this young and you got to put them in and coach them up and, and, and have them get better. And that, to me, is what's missing. Okay. I, I'm hearing some of those yells. I, I think she's got potential to be a heavy metal singer. I don't know. I'm just uh, – <laughs> I'm just hearing those screams. I'm going, man, she's got metal potential there. Yeah. All right. All she right. Let's go with. Sing. Go ahead. She likes, to sing. she likes to sing. Okay, good. Good. All right. Let's see. We got to get her singing then. Um, we got uh, some news with the Dolphins. Austin Jackson and the anti-vaxxer, Adam Shaheen, 
Uh, he wasted no time, baby. He's already. And here's the interesting part about all of this, which sucks. Shaheem is definitely out for the game. Yeah, he was out for the game with whatever injury he had, unless he returned to practice this week. So that's not a surprise. I don't think he was going to no, no, play. No, no, what I'm saying, what I'm saying, forget the injury. He's out already with COVID. Even if he had no injury and he's ready to go, he's done because he's an anti-vaxxer. He will have to miss now 10 days. The question is, uh, Austin, hold on hold a second. On. We on. don't know if he's caught COVID or if he's in the protocol. Remember, the non-vaccine players, it's easier for them to have been had exposure to people who have the vaccine like Austin Jackson. Let's say Austin Jackson has has as as COVID. And because Adam Shaheen had exposure to him, now Adam Shaheen has to test negative. Uh, I think it's five straight days. Uh, no, no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. No. Unvaccinated players miss 10 days automatically. They're but, done unvaccinated uh, vaccinated players and this is what we're going to find out about austin jackson now no, we don't know if he's vaccinated or unvaccinated because i guess the players didn't tell us did, did you take a did you follow up on the wristbands and do you know who's unvaccinated and vaccinated and all that stuff wait, wait, it, it's no um okay austin so jackson this is a so this is how it goes with austin jackson if he's unvaccinated he's not playing on sunday he's already out but if he's vaccinated he has to show negative tests in 24 hours apart and back to back. If he does that, he it, gets put in same, right it's, away. It's, it's, it's five days for unvaccinated players. They have to show net five negative tests to be back. So I just I just read where it's unvaccinated will miss 10 days and vaccinated players need a negative virus. test 24 hours apart. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying. Contact. No, if they caught the virus, they're definitely done, Omar. What yeah. The thing is, we don't know if he is just on COVID because he was close to Adam Shaheen and he had contact to him or Adam Shaheen had contact to somebody else, you know, that had COVID. But one thing's for sure, Shaheen will not be there on Sunday. He wasn't going to be there on out. Sunday anyway. Yeah, he okay, wasn't going to be there on Sunday, vaccine or not vaccine He's battling an injury he hadn't practiced last week. I highly doubt it. He 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 suffered an injury somehow, um, and it's pretty disappointing because he was he had established himself as a second tight end. He had surpassed Durham oh, Smite, so um, it, he he really had a strong camp. So it'll be interesting to see what happens from that standpoint. But the Austin Jackson one is even bigger than Adam Sheen. We're talking about a second tight end. Um, yeah, yeah, Austin but hold Jackson, on a second. But the part that I, the, the part that we'll never find out probably is, did Adam Shaheen get Austin Jackson in trouble? Was Austin Jackson around the anti vaxxer and did the anti vaxxer get COVID and then expose uh, it, it, Jackson? I hate, I hate the fact that people blame everything on the vaccine. The last time there were five guys that were out suspended, Adam Shaheen, which was one of them, was the one who did not have COVID. So right. let, 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 you know. It, it's the, the the bar is higher for the anti-vaxxer to get back and get back on the field. Um, he has a right to make any decision that he wants to make That's with right. his health, his life, just like everybody else in society. I hate that fact that every time somebody goes on suspension and he's involved, he, he gets blamed for it. I, I don't like that. I think that's unhealthy. I think that's unhealthy for everybody in the league. But yes. Well, but if, but Omar, if you're Omar unvaccinated, the facts yeah. are the, the facts are if you're unvaccinated in life or in football, you are putting more people at risk, not just yourself. Do not because disagree. You have a bigger chance of catching the vac the the virus than a person that's vaccinated. A person that's vaccinated has a chance of fighting off the virus. And even if they get it, at least they won't get hospitalized or die, which I'm sure the NFL said, let's get all of our players vaccinated yeah. because we certainly don't want an NFL player dying. And, uh, and, and I think that that's the one thing that it has really kind of hasn't really put the kibosh on the athletes yet because they have that invincibility factor to them. And, and, and luckily we haven't lost an athlete, but if the day you lose a professional athlete, that is going to have an incredible effect on yeah. everybody in every sport. I, 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 the way that it was put to me, and I, I, I'm glad I have this opportunity. Um, somebody passed it on to me because they heard it. Um, a back, getting the vaccine is 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 just in the equivalent of 
you know you're going to get bit by a snake. Do you want the snake with venom or do you want the snake without the venom? Exactly. Because you're going, you're probably going to catch COVID and this Delta variant and whatever variant is coming next. The question is, do you want to have the antibodies to fight it off to prevent yourself from getting sick? And exactly. I fortunately have not had COVID yet, or at least I don't think I have. There have been a couple of instances where I swear to God, I thought I had it. And luckily I get tested now every week by the NFL and it wasn't COVID, but literally, you know, I would, I would never want to know what that was like. The reason I, I was no. not pro vaccine until the doctors told my wife, we had just had the baby and the doctor said, you want to help your daughter get the vaccine so the antibodies can go into her breast milk and you can pass it on to, to, to your daughter. And for you, for the husband, go get the vaccine so that the likelihood that you bring something home that could compromise your child and make your child deathly sick is, is not high. For me, as a, as, done, done deal. And everybody should look at it from that standpoint. I have my parents in their 70s. My father literally had to retire from running his own electrical shop because he didn't want to die. He said, he told me last week, counted it up, five relatives have died from COVID within yeah. the last year. Five, all oh. his peers, his age. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, at cousins. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, like, protect the loved ones that, that are, are the most at, at harm, at risk. Okay. Not only that, let's just protect each other. Let's protect the human race, dude. Let's get the damn vaccine so we can kill this virus off, dude. The, the more yeah. we let it live, the more it can also turn into other variants. Oh, other down. variants, exactly. Yeah, which is going to be crazy, I, man. I don't believe it's going to go anywhere. I think we're going to be taking COVID vaccines the way we take flu vaccines. I mean, my daughter just got vaccinated last week. She took four vaccines. They don't even tell you what they're for anymore. Um, it, it, you know, it was a bitch for, for her to deal with, but she took yeah. four vaccines all at one time. And this is right. the second round of vaccines. So she took four a couple of months ago. So literally for a child, eight vaccines. Now we just add a night to it. Let's let's it is what it is, man. This is gonna be here. It's gonna be around. It's not going anywhere. It, it took it took decades for polio to get uh obliterated, and that was with a vaccine. And that's and that's because well, and, and they don't have the resources in those days like we have now. So it's still going to take us some time because remember, yeah. we, we don't have the majority of the world vaccinated. The majority of the world isn't vaccinated and there's lots of countries that just don't have any of the resources. And that's why other countries like ours are helping those kind of countries get vaccinated, because the more we get the world vaccinated, the more we can actually kill this stupid thing off and yeah. it'll stop killing us, which would be a beautiful thing if we can eliminate this. All right. So is it Greg Little automatically at left tackle if Austin Jackson can't go? Depends on how Adam Shaheen is an option, but he hasn't practiced. He's got an injury. Um, the, it, it depends on how well, I'm sure he's going to get tried there. It depends on how well he looks practicing at left tackle. Um, he played it all at Notre Dame. Then you've got Jesse Davis, who everybody knows, you know, put, put some respect on Jesse Davis's name. Jesse Davis has played left tackle for you. He wasn't a problem. Yeah, yeah but, 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 but to his blind side is that side. You're not going to move Jesse. Not in this, not now with not this a, quarterback. It's it, it'll. I I would imagine Jesse stays there because that's his blind side. That that's so a good that, point. That's a good point. But you have guys who can play right tackle. I don't know if you necessarily have guys who can play left tackle. Left tackle, you're facing everybody's best pass rusher. I I personally would not move Jesse Davis. But right, I'm no, also, it doesn't make sense right now. That's the blind side of of Tua. I would put either. Whether it's Little or um, who's the other guy that I'm missing? There's one more guy. Adam, Adam I, I can, Liam Eikenberg. That's it. Liam Eikenberg. And then you got to park Smythe right next to him, dude. And that's it. I'm sorry. You're going to have to put like a six-man line or something. Do I want a rookie or my veteran protecting? I, I mean, it's the Patriots, so they're going to attack whatever your weakest link is. If you put Liam Eikenberg on the field, they're going to come after him all game. So yeah. you're, you're, you know. It could be very, very little, Greg Little. 
That's the one thing I love about playing the Patriots. You get a real good, thorough understanding about what their what your weakest areas are of your team because they're <laughs> going to attack them all game. Yeah, they're going to attack them. There's, there's no doubt about that. I would imagine also the Dolphins are going to do a job on trying to attack Mac Jones too, you know, on the flip side. While we talk about everything that the Patriots are going to try to expose, I think the Dolphins are also going to try to, you know, uh, hurry the young man up, get him uncomfortable. He's not necessarily Mr. Nimble back there. He's got some athleticism, but he's not necessarily, you know, he's not Tom Brady statuesque. Yeah. But he can move around a little bit. But still, I think you want to get him out of that comfort zone a little bit. So I would imagine that what does Miami have to do to make things uncomfortable for Mac Jones? Uh, vary the looks, uh, give them that exotic blitz package, the, the amoeba or whatever that people call it. I don't even know if the team calls it that. Um, get, I, I would love to see them get pressure with just four, but we all know that that's not the reality of this defense. So it, it'll be interesting to see what approach that they take. Um, obviously you're going to have the, the Byron and Xavier covering whatever is the best of the secondary out there, whatever the best of wide receivers that are out there. But my question is who defends the slot receiver, even though we don't know what the new look Patriots look like. The tight ends, we got Eric Rowe on 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 these two, actually one, I think one suffered an injury. Um, the FIU, John, um, John U. Smith. So yeah. it, it's going to be interesting. I, I don't think people put respect on Eric Rowe as much as they should. Uh, He's been he's had a strong camp. He's had a phenomenal season last year, with the exceptions of Travis Kelsey and, and the kid from the guy from uh Las Vegas. Uh so so it'll it, it's gonna be interesting to see how Dolphins approach this. Yeah, mo most guys can't cover the kid uh the kid from Vegas, anyways. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Although I will give him credit, man. Um when Roe was covering uh uh the uh, the Atlanta kid, uh the Florida oh, yeah, Florida. Um, yeah, he put he he, he 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 put him in a shell, dude. That was that was solid on on Rose's part there. Um, receiving core, what can we expect this week? How healthy will it be? Do you think? <laughs> uh, as healthy as it's probably going to be all season, which is probably everybody's going to be at 75, 80 percent. But that's just the reality of of where they are as a unit. I are you expecting any of them to miss? Huh? Are, you, are, are, are you expecting any receivers to miss no, the game, or is gonna everybody going to be able to? I think they're going to play. Uh, clearly, you're not going to have Will Fuller. That's a suspension. But I, I think they're all going to play, whether they're all 100%. I, I, I don't know. I probably doubt it. But um, the Dolphins have taken a very precautious approach to get them to the point where they're ready for game, for, for, for game day, for September 12th. So I would expect most of them to be on the field. Waddle is All definitely right. playing. He's healthy. Um, Albert Wilson is practicing this week. We'll see if he gets cleared. Uh, Devontae Parker has been nursing it, nursing it, nursing it. I'm sorry, but you've been nursing it for five weeks. It's time to go. Um, five weeks should heal just about everything except for a knee scope, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. So your, your hamstring sh should be healed, should be healed. Like, you five weeks. Mac Jones and Tua. I talked about this last week. If Mac Jones wins this game, <laughs> you know what happens, right? You know what happens now, right? Because all the Herbert stuff, then it's going to be, oh, well, wait a minute. We got the wrong Alabama quarterback now. You know that that's going to happen if it's going to happen, but it, it, I don't think it's predicated on – it's going to happen, but anybody – I'm not making any knee-jerk reactions. I'm just any, telling you what I'm just telling you what's going to end up happening. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with whatever people say. Look, look at ask me about two in 2023. If he's still here as the Dolphins quarterback, um, <laughs> ask, ask ask me about him in 2023. That's when I expect him to be an elite quarterback. When he's seen everything everybody could throw at him. When he's proven that he's healthy. When his body's in tip-top shape, when when his arm is strong, um, you know when he's got comfort in this offense. So I don't really worry about Week One Mac Jones battles. Great storyline, Mike. The nation interested in the story, but you know what? 
this is the Patriots against the Dolphins. And I promise you, the defense will have more to do with Miami's do win or loss than the than Matt Jones and Tua. By the way, everybody's uh, well, not everybody. A couple of people saying that the uh, the child's too beautiful to be yours. But they, <laughs> haven't seen, they haven't seen your wife. That's the thing. Which you, which I I, I uh, by the way, I met his wife on Friday night. Omar outkicked his coverage. Way outkicked my coverage. Yes. Way. I mean, like, 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 way out there. I just yes. want you to know. Okay? But I have proof. This is me as a baby. Hold on. This is me as a baby. At her age. And look at this child. This is me right here. It's like a <laughs> second coming of me. So it's she looks just like me. My wife, it bothers my wife. I hear about it every day. Like how well I carried her for nine months. Why does she look just like you? And you know, and my theory is because she'll look like you when she's older, and thank God for that. Yes, there you go. There you go. And bad luck for you, by the way, because you're the one that's going to have to walk around with a shotgun. So, you know, that's, yeah, uh, I'll be all right. She's going to be a uh, smart, that's, that's strong, bad news for you. <laughs> independent woman. <laughs> all right. Oh, have uh, have a great day, my brother. Enjoy your Labor Day. And uh, let's uh, football is here, my brother. Finally. So we got to cover it. Now we Don't got 18 weeks of this. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, about. About twenty when you include the playoffs because oh okay you're you're you're, you're including the playoffs okay all right damn right Dolphins are going to the playoffs bro come on you know that's just automatic money in the bank playoffs <laughs> automatic twice in the last two two decades automatic right. automatic yeah but these guys weren't running it in the last two decades I have faith we in shall Greer see. And we Let's shall see. see all right, all right Studley man. as always thank you my brother. There you go, the great Omar Kelly. We love Omar Kelly and the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins Report. You've been listening to the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins Report with Omar Kelly. For additions, home remodeling, or custom work, call Eric at 305-433-4843. EJDconstruction.com is the custom home builder and general contractor you can trust. 305-433-4843.